Our sun is, essentially, a chaotic ball of hot exploding gas in space. Usually, it is regarded as the source of all life on Earth, after all, it does bathe every organism on the planet with its radiant energy every day. However, what is given can be taken away, and it is likely that the sun doesn't always play so nice. Sometimes, when the sun gets really angry, it spits on the earth in a phenomenon known as a coronal mass ejection, or CME for short. In this video, we will cover solar flares and CMEs, explaining the difference between the two as well as outlining the effects of both. At the end of the video, we'll outline a worst case scenario for a super flare, and what that might look like for planet Earth. Flares and CMEs are both giant eruptions on the surface of the Sun, however they differ in a few ways. Flares are typically not as big of a problem, as they only release energy out into space. Coronal mass ejections are more serious, as they release not only energy, but matter into space. This matter comes in the form of charged particles. When these particles come into contact with Earth's surface and magnetosphere, they can interfere with the power grid and electronic devices. If the outburst is significant enough, it can completely fry electronics on the surface. This actually happened in 1859, and was called the Carrington Event. During this event, a massive CME hit Earth and caused widespread damage to the electrical grid. Luckily for the humans living on Earth at the time, electrical power was still new, and was not heavily depended on. The CME did a lot of damage to telegraph machines though, with many emitting sparks and even shocking their operators. In 2012, we narrowly avoided a CME similar in size to the one in 1859. Simply put, if this CME had hit Earth, the results would have been absolutely catastrophic. The devastation from what would have essentially been a worldwide EMP cannot be understated. Power grids and electronics across the planet would have been irreparably damaged, and all of our satellites in orbit would have been completely fried. It is estimated that such an event would have costed upwards of two trillion dollars, and it is thought that we would still be picking up the pieces today. For comparison, the costliest natural disaster to date, the 2011 Tohoku earthquake, cost just under half a trillion dollars. While their effects differ, solar flares and CMEs often go hand in hand. Usually, the most powerful flares result in CMEs as well. The frequency of these events depends on our sun has an 11-year cycle, in which there is a solar maximum and minimum. At solar minimum, the sun is much more quiet, and only has a flare and or CME every week or so. However, at solar maximum, the sun can have multiple flares and or CMEs in a single day. As of October 2020, we have just entered the new solar cycle. The next solar maximum is predicted to occur in 2025, and the likelihood of a flare or CME hitting us between now and the next solar minimum is high. So, we have good news and bad news. The good news is that on Earth, our magnetic field shields us from most solar activity. This field deflects most charged particles coming our way. The bad news is that for the past few centuries, our magnetic field has been weakening, and this has been accelerating as well. If a big flare or CME were to hit Earth with its magnetic field significantly weakened, the effects would be exponentially more destructive. 
The following is a description of what might occur on Earth if a massive flare and CME were to hit us with a weakened magnetic field. If you've seen the 2009 movie Knowing, this will be similar, however we will go into more detail about what exactly happens. We have tried to keep our scenario as scientifically accurate as possible, leaving little to speculation, but it is impossible to predict exactly what would happen. With that said, it is important to note that this is a worst case scenario, and should be taken with a grain of salt. Monday, 20xx6am, an otherwise normal morning on planet Earth. Nobody in the general population knows what's about to happen. 8 a.m. In an instant and without warning, all electronics across the daytime side of the planet begin to fail. Phones, computers, lights do not work. Cars do not start. Water no longer flows from the tap. Not knowing what is going on, Many people head outside to see if their neighbors are experiencing the same blackout. As they head outside, many notice that the sun's corona is brighter. 9 AM The sun has started to become partially obscured by what appears to be a shell of gas expanding outwards. Panic begins to ensue as there is no media coverage or government statement explaining what is happening. 12 PM The cloud around the sun has expanded and obscured it further. To observers, it looks as if the sun has exploded. There is widespread disorder. As time passes, a global aurora begins appearing in the sky. 3 PM the shell has continued to expand and obscure the sun. The sky is a reddish-orange, most of the light being provided by the glow of this hot gas. Much of the world is in anarchy, while a very small portion of the population has retreated into underground bunkers. 5 p.m. The shell of gas completely covers the sky. Massive earthquakes are starting to happen across the globe, causing tsunamis and flooding in coastal regions, and volcanic activity on land. Many people are helpless. Some have perished, others have passed out due to the panic. A small amount of strong-willed survivors are still scrambling for safety. 7 PM the gas shell is now impacting Earth's atmosphere. Any electronics that survived the original blast are now fried across the planet. The sky looks as if it is on fire. Lightning is rapidly striking the surface of the planet everywhere, not originating from any clouds but from the fiery sky. Massive earthquakes shake parts of the globe as fault lines shift up to hundreds of meters in a matter of minutes. Some land masses sink beneath the ocean as others rise. The moon is glowing brightly and is blood red to observers. The surface temperature across the planet rises and rises by the minute, reaching 100 degrees Celsius, water's boiling point, in some parts of the planet. Anyone caught exposed on the surface is dead within minutes. 9 PM The sky continues to glow and flash, but the earthquakes and lightning have begun to subside. 12 AM The sky begins to darken as the shell of gas has passed Earth. The temperature begins to drop rapidly. Clouds begin to form from all of the moisture in the atmosphere caused by the evaporated water, and soon it starts to rain for weeks on end across the planet. The colossal earthquakes have changed the surface of the planet forever. Some places have been hit significantly harder than others. Life is still present on the planet in abundance, but the human survivors have been thrust into a new stone age.
Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more content, as we have many more interesting topics to discuss.